my phone rang and I have to stop. But it's going to stay here for a while. So when I'm doing these type of paintings, I really don't have like a I haven't positioned yet my model or anything, so I have to basically what I do is that I kind of just sculpt where I want her or the position and why not and from there I kind of just take how it's going to look and I like this painting because I don't know they just make it work harder and Especially positioning a human being, you know? I can do 20 of these uh, and not get tired of them just because I know that they're so fun to do and so easy. So we're just gonna... So right now you can see how I position the face and I have one eye or what looks like an eye and her shoulder is on this side and the other shoulder is coming up. At this point I really don't have like where is what yet but you see you have like an idea of how it's going to look. So what I do is that if I have any doubts, I squint my eyes and try to fix it. So right now I'm actually just Assuming that's where their hair is or kind of just creating hair I like how watercolors kind of just Really doesn't judge you in that department I guess kind of just Let's you work with what you got in that aspect. And of course, the paper that I'm using, it's going to either help me or not help me. So right now it's, let's put it this way, it's in between. I prefer to work with cold press um, but I enjoy working also on hot press as well because I think hot press is more like for details and stuff and cold press kind of just sucks up more paint I'm thinking I don't know I could be wrong I don't know You see here that I'm working with different parts of the body and I divide the washes with what I got or 
where I think it can go. I really don't give many details as to where is what, but just paint. I'm going to create a hand. Coming from this side, and I'm going to keep adding more dark. Now, in a lot of my paintings, you'll see some of the watercolor nudes really don't have like a face per se and the reason why is because I like to create emotion and really not specific like I go more deep into into a painting not just painting because it looks pretty but something that the person that is actually looking at it can relate to it. And I like to create an emotion when I paint, of course. I'm just going to Now, watercolors can help you achieve that as well as because watercolor is a very moody medium, I, I think. I, I'm just saying. At this point, I try to put my shadows as close as possible remember I don't have a model or anything I'm just painting cuz so right now I'm just giving shadow to a hand and I want to lift up a finger here And as I continue to add shadows, you're going to continue seeing a somewhat figure. Now for the small parts, I'm going to change my brush to a more smaller, finer brush. and see what I can do for the details and I also when I was learning to do watercolors etc I'm still learning though I always had the question like how many layers should a watercolor painting have or how many layers should I do in a watercolor and the answer is it depends on the paper like this paper is not like the greatest even though I use it for some of my paintings um, but it, may, it, it gives you and allows you to sketch pretty well so for a paper of this kind about three or four layers if you know your of course if you know your um, paper it will be better
And so I really don't like to make it obvious when I'm doing a person. But you really have to like, I really like, it's understandable that the person doesn't have no clothes on, of course. But it's not like an obvious thing in your face, she's naked. And I don't know, I just like to make my ladies more more art than just a naked body, I don't know. Maybe I'm not maybe I'm not really explaining. So I'm going to add one more layer of dark and here I also like like the old old type of what a color or what a, what a color is like um Russell Flint I always admire his work and I like that type of technique that he used to use um Most of the bodies are like, have like a very hard, dark to light contrast, so I noticed that. If I see like something is bothering me, I just scrape it off. If I need the light from that area, I scrape it off as well. So now we're going to do the shadows for some of the fingers and I'm going to be dragging I'm going to come here with my brush going to darken again this area
and I'm going to elongate the hair now just a bit. going to mark down the belly button I always like to give like a pinkish color to it because that's that's muscle and I'm going to lift up anything that I see that Now since the figure is like in there all oh my gosh. We're going to give a really dark rich background to this one. Okay. Then I'm going to close on this arm right here.
going to darken this area here. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Doing the same thing. A really nice contrast there. Some droplets of water, so it makes it very interesting. going to come back again and use this tiny little detail brush because I like this one a lot. I'm going to start giving some really nice shadow. For my shadows I have like a mixture of everything 